Okay, I'm going to try and show you guys how to color correct a photo using uh, the Info Palette color sampler point and a, uh, and a levels adjustment layer. I just want to say that I really suck at the screencasting thing, so I'm just, just going to wing it. And if you guys get something out of it, that's good. If you don't, well, it's free. It doesn't matter. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is go to the color sampler tool, which is on the eyedropper flyout menu, second option there. I'm going to go up to the top and select the 5x5 five five average. Uh, your other options are a point sample and some other larger average. Point sample absolutely sucks. You don't want to use that. So, so I'm going to go with the 5x5 five five average. Um, next thing I'm going to do, if you've never used the point sampler tool, or the, yeah, that's the point sampler tool, just a matter of clicking on the screen anywhere you want, and it uh, it puts some info points up on your info palette, which, by the way, I've broken away from the palette well and drag out onto the screen so that it doesn't disappear in the middle of working with it. Um, if, if you've put one of these points in a place and you don't like it, while that uh, tool is still active, it's just a matter of coming out, clicking on the point, and dragging it to a new location. And in this situation, I'm actually going to take point number one. I'm going to come over. I'm going to drop it on this tire here. I'm looking for an area that's uh, black, not totally black, but something that I know it's not like a dark brown or dark red or something. It has to be black. Uh, the number two point I want to put on an area that's supposed to be like a, some sort of a mid-level gray. And this driveway, I think, would qualify for that. So I'm going to leave this one right here. And for the third point, I want to put it on a white. I'm going to choose an area here on the dress and leave it there. Okay, if you go up to the uh, info palette, you can see my black, gray, and white sample points. And in the process of color uh, correcting an image, we know this image has a color cast, but we don't know what colors some of these things are supposed to be. Say, for example, the car or or even these trees. We don't know what those numbers, but we do know what colors white is. White is a combination of all the color channels being equal. And uh, so if you can, if you look at your color palette, or I'm sorry, your info palette, and point number three should be white, we see that the numbers don't add up to be the same. The blue channel is much higher than the other two channels, and the green channel is higher than the, than the red channel. So if we could bring those numbers to to be equal by manipulating the, the, the color image data, we'll have a color balanced image. And by the way, the gray and the black are nothing more than shades of white, only much darker. So by having more than one point gives us a little bit more control and we can, uh, we can manipulate both ends of the scale at the same time and the middle. So the next thing I'm going to do is go down to my uh, adjustment layers and select a levels adjustment layer. Okay, since by looking at the uh, info palette, we can see that the blue level in the very middle is really high compared to the other. So I'm going to work on that first. When you go to your levels palette here, you'll see uh, channel options. We're going to select the blue channel by selecting the drop down box. And we're going to work on this middle slider. By moving it left or right, we can manipulate the blue channel. And since those levels are really high in blue for the for what we want to be great, we're going to drag the slider to the right and pull those numbers down. If you watch the info palette on the point number two, you can watch those numbers drop. If you want finer control than the slider, click in the box here and you can use your up and down arrows. And sometimes you have to watch the uh, info palette to see if you're, if you're going the right direction or not. I'm going to take this one down to 84. Already the image looks, the cast is almost completely gone. Um, I'm going to bring the red channel up, so I'm going to go back up to the drop-down box, select the red channel. In the same box, I'm just going to leave it selected there and hit the down arrow. Oops, the wrong direction. Up arrow. Okay, we're on 84, 84, and 84 for point number two. Since uh, point number one reads really high in the red, I'm going to work on that next. One of the things I do try to do is with the, uh, with the low values, I try to bring all the higher channels down to meet the lower channel. And on the upper channel point, I try to bring all the values up to match the highest. Now, it's also not critical if all these values match exactly. If you're within a few points of one and another, you're going to be balanced. So while we're still on, uh, we're going to look at point one. We're going to work on the red channel. We're going to try and bring that down. Uh, let's take it down to 18 if we can. Um, also, 
when you manipulate one one end of the tonal scale, you tend to screw up the other one. So I might have to flip back and forth here. Sometimes it pays to overshoot a little bit so that when you adjust the slider on the other end, you can uh, you can get them close or you can pull it back down. Okay, those look pretty good. Let's work on the green channel on the low end. Bring it down a little bit. Okay. So right now, point number one looks pretty close. Point number two, they're pretty close. Point number three, it looks like we need to bring the red channel up. Go to the red channel. Click in this box. I'm going to hit the down arrow. That should pull that up. I'm going to go up to 226, maybe a little bit further. And then I'm going to go back to the middle box, bring it back down, and it'll pull the high point down as well. Uh, let's stop right there. Yeah. Let's, let's change this all in a little bit more. All right, let's go back to the blue channel. Yeah, it's a lot of screwing around back and forth, but it's a kind of a scientific method that's unlike so many methods I see on the Internet where they're just eyeballing it, and I've never been comfortable with that. So, okay, and let's go one more one more adjustment here maybe on the green on the low end, and we'll bring it down to there, and screw with the middle a little bit more too. Okay, those are all pretty close. I think at this point it's just a lot of, it's just numbers, and it's not going to make a big difference in the image. I'm going to hit OK, and there you have it. Here's a before, here's a before, and here's an after. Works pretty well. Okay, now that I've shown you that, I'm going to show you something that's actually a little bit easier yet. No, maybe not as much control, but it, in most images, it works pretty well. I'm going to throw this pre-existing, uh, well, actually, let's just shut this existing levels command off, or levels adjustment layer. I'm going to create a new uh, levels adjustment layer. Okay, now we have on this uh, dialog, we have some eyedroppers. Unlike the, the eyedropper on the, uh, the main palette over here to the left, this eyedropper on the left, all it does is gives you, tells you what the values are underneath the cursor. The, the eyedroppers on the Levels uh, Adjustment Layer dialog actually do just the opposite. They will change the values that are under the cursor when you click. Well, seeing that this image has a lot of blue in the middle, I'm going to work, I'm going to double click this middle um, eyedropper tool and it brings up uh, another dialog. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the values in this dialog to match um, the middle value in my number two point here, which is 84. So I'm just going to type that in here. Tab to the next one. <clears throat> Tab to the next one. Okay, and we're hit OK here. Now, with this tool still active, the gray eyedropper highlighted, I'm going to go down and click on my number two point. And I'm going to hit OK. Uh, it's asking to say the target color. I'm going to say no. That one simple little thing worked on the same theory. It causes all the um, color channels to line up to give me the right value for that middle gray. Um, if your image was really white, like a snow scene, uh, you would probably use the, the light eyedropper. In fact, let's, I have another image here. Let's open that up and look at it real quick. I got this image off the internet. It's a snow scene. If we do the same thing, I've already got a point on there, so we'll just leave it there. I'm going to go to the Levels command. I'm going to double-click my white eyedropper, and I'm going to change all the values to match the uh, the highest value in for the number one point there, which is 224. Oops, I didn't put the right value on the second one. All right, select OK. Uh, my dropper still highlighted. Move this out of the way. I'm going to click right on the exact same one number one point there. Voila. No. That's one simple little thing. Color correct that image, and I know it's right because white is white. If all the numbers or if all the color channels agree, then I know that there's no color cast in this image. And that's as simple as it gets. Most of the uh, demos I see on the internet got you doing all kind of jumping through hoops and. None of them, I think, actually look like they're actually doing what they're supposed to do. So there you go. That's all there is to it. I hope this uh, little demonstration proves beneficial to some of you.